Hello and welcome to Art Terms. This is part of your Unit 1 composition. The arrangement of the individual elements within a work of art so as to, to form a united whole. I'd like to start with this one right here. This composition is a photograph and any composition that has these diagonal lines or triangles tends to be a very strong composition. Then we have the golden ratio, which is this. This is the Fibonacci, it's based on the Fibonacci sequence, but I actually prefer this one, which is the rule of thirds. And the reason why I prefer this one is because it's pretty much the same thing. It's just a lot simpler to use. Now, representational. Any representational art is going to be of a person, place, or thing. And here we have two self-portraits by Pablo Picasso. One is more realistic, and then one is more abstracted. Here we have um, naturalistic, which is realistic. Um, and you're going to see that with any painting that's trying to show you nature as it is. That can be pushed to photorealism, which we have here with John Bairn. And this is actually a painting. It's not a photograph, but it looks so realistic that it looks like a photograph. Illusionism is like with photorealism, you're painting or sculpting to make something look real. It's going to trick your eye. At first, they would do this with frescoes. They would paint the ceiling as if it were a night sky or here, like you were looking up into a bright blue sky with nice fluffy clouds. Trompe l'oeil, which is a French term that means deceive the eye, is what we're considering of what we're doing when we do illusion. So you have this gentleman here, stepping out of the frame of the painting. And then here you have a th nice 3D rendering on the ground. Both are being rendered as if they were 3D, but they're both on a two-dimensional surface. Idealized figures are figures, it's more of a cultural thing. They're figures that were considered ideal at that time. So here we have the spear bearer from ancient Greece and here from 1490, the 15th century, we have vanity and this right here, this kind of pot belly was considered very beautiful at that time. This is the palette of Narmer and this is showing stylism. Stylized figures are going to have more of a, they're not correct, but they're doing it on purpose. It's not that the Egyptians couldn't make it more realistic or more naturalistic, as we should say. It was they were doing it on a purpose. This is actually very, very early. Look here, these are contemporaries. They're both fourth dynasty. They were both done around the same time period. One is very stylized and the other one's much more naturalistic. Abstraction is that changing it from the natural and making it more abstracted or more distorted. Here we have the Starry Night from Vincent van Gogh and no, it doesn't look like a city. No, it doesn't look like the sky, but we can read it and we can tell that yes, it is the sky and it is the town. Same here for Marc Chacal. You have the man's face, then you have the cow, and we can still read these things. We still see that, so therefore it's still representational. It's just abstracted.
Then we have non-representational, such as Kandinsky's Composition 7. Kandinsky was one of the first, excuse me, he's credited as the first to do non-representational. He wanted to be able to show music via his painting. And it's definitely bright and cheery. I'm sure the music he was listening to was bright and cheery.